warm greetings to everyone. Uh, so okay. I am Suyash Singh uh, from IIT Madras. I did my post-graduation from IIT Madras in aerospace engineering. And uh, I am the founder of Avishkar Hyperloop, uh, which is, uh, we'll tell about that. But. Hi guys, I am Pranit. I am currently doing my third year of B.Tech at IIT Madras in uh, Department of Engineering Design. Currently, I am the team head for Avishkar Hyperloop and present and the future is what I am going to be portraying on. So, uh, we are 30 individuals. Uh, I am representing Avishkar Hyperloop more than me here. And uh, we are 30 individuals who came together, uh, you know, to build something which uh, is very revolutionary and futuristic mode of transportation. So, Hyperloop uh, was one vision uh, which, you know, bring all 30 members together here. We work out of IIT Madras and Center for Innovation, uh, which is a place where, you know, innovation takes place. Uh, a shape into a product. So our vision is to design and develop futuristic technologies for high-speed high transportation. One of those is Hyperloop. And our main motive was not just to develop Hyperloop, but to redefine things. For instance, diversity. Today, how we see diversity is gender diversity, caste diversity and stuff. But then our team chose a different path. We have students ranging from uh, B.Tech students, M.Tech, M.S. and even Ph.D. scholars. So that's the kind of diversity our team had. Of course, from multidisciplinary backgrounds, from mechanical, electrical, civil, and a lot of departments. Yet, I would like to uh, you know, highlight on this fact that people were not restricted to their work of domains based on their academic backgrounds. For instance, we had a student from the metallurgy department who worked on the battery pack of our pod. I mean, there, there is actually no link that you can see. But then that's the kind of interests and fields that people chose to explore as a part of our team. What are the problems that we are facing today? Like, what are the problems the world is facing today? Transportation. We have done internet right. Now, next is transportation. So, exactly what you think when you come to the problem of transportation traffic. Now, Bangalore, LA, like, I'm just taking two examples because I've been to there. That's why. Now, these two places are full of traffic. And then, as you know, when you go to an airport, you have to do the check-in, you know, the baggage put there, here and there. You waste around a couple of hours. If you want to go from here, Chennai to Bangalore, 30 minutes is the travel time for the aircraft. Uh, even lesser than that, but all the things like you have to reach one and a half hours before. So all these, you know, combined, everything is, you know, getting cluttered, pained every day. So what we want to do is, you know, we want to build something as fast as aircraft, as cheap as rail and water, uh, road and water, and as reliable as rail. So you know, that is where we step into the world of Hyperloop. So Hyperloop, as we say, is the fifth mode of transportation, which picks in the best aspects of the existing modes of transportation, thus making it the most efficient one and most viable one. Now, the speeds that we're looking at uh, through Hyperloop is 1,000 kilometers per hour. And that's something that blows off our minds where we think that 1,000 kilometers per hour. I mean, a car today runs at 200 kilometers per hour on an average speed or a bullet train, or let's say the fastest thing you can think of is an airplane which goes at 800 kilometers per hour maximum. But today we're talking at 1,000, 1,200 kilometers per hour. What makes this possible is, that, is the fact that we neglect things that restrict our speed, which is the aerodynamic drag and the mechanical drag, the friction as we say. So these two things, once we neglect it, we begin approaching high speeds. And of course, so this is uh, done by running the pod in a contactless motion in a vacuum tube. So a vacuum tube, again, let's just not get uh, scared by the fact that how would we travel in a vacuum tube? Because the, uh, the thing that we travel in airplanes itself is a pressurized environment in a low pressure region. I mean, we cannot breathe outside. But then th there's, uh, our airplanes, our, aeropl our air, fares, air fra journeys are very comfortable. So th there's no issue here. Hyperloop was introduced to the world by Elon Musk. So he wrote a white paper, Hyperloop Alpha where uh, he introduced the world, gave in a lot of technical uh, ideas, and then he opened up a, con a competition, a student competition, the SpaceX Hyperloop competition, which is where we stepped into the picture and started contributing to this mode of transportation. So, uh, exactly where we are moving. We are going to grow over the years, and then we will explode someday, someday. 
So some people like Elon Musk, some people like you know Sundar Pichai has to come into picture and say that okay, we will drive this way. So yeah, but here also we all have to contribute. So mo world is moving towards a place where you know everything will double every 10 years. So 80% of the passenger miles will increase, 88% of the freight movement will increase, port volume in will increase by two, you know, twice what it is now. So all these things you know, will come into existence and we need to figure out a way of transportation which will actually move all these things efficiently from one place to another. And Hyperloop is one of those uh, mode where we don't worry about, you know, stopping at different places. You start from one place, you reach to other place without stopping anywhere. So that is, uh, you know, another motto. Why do we need to do so much of investment? Why do we need to, you know, innovate so much in the field of transportation? Moving on to make things more relatable. So we did a case study where uh, we took up a case of Chennai to Bangalore. So today Chennai to Bangalore on an average travel time is uh, five to six hours as I can say uh, by road or by rail. And if we go by airplanes then it comes out to like two hours, maybe two, two and a half hours including the check-in time and all of that. Then uh, what comes into picture is the Hyperloop. So the difference that Hyperloop creates is fact number one, it goes from heart of city one to heart of city two. So it's from central cities. And fact number two, the time. So I'm talking at 25 minutes from Chennai to Bangalore. Today it takes us more than 25 minutes only to reach the airport of either of these cities. And of course all of us are aware of the Bangalore traffic. So Hyperloop is something that can solve down a lot of problems. Uh, it might be a little infrastructure heavy project, in fact it is, but then it, it is going to be worth it. The kind of passenger movement, the kind of cargo movement that we see today, all of this is definitely going to be worth it. Yeah, so and Bangalore airport is not in Bangalore. Yeah, outside yeah. the city again, another factor. So, so, so Nick, uh, yes, yeah, so actually when we did the case study it is it was more into you know cutting down all the cost and the time from moving from one place to another so now here is the trial that we did so this trial was to attempt spacex hyperloop pod competition and win it so we started in 2017 october actually i was sitting in one room and thinking about okay reading about elon musk and thinking can i actually do something what he does and I got struck with this, you know, competition notification that, okay, we are starting uh, SpaceX Hyperloop pod competition 2018. So I thought, okay, let's do it. I went to Center for Innovation. I, you know, we all 30 individuals get together and we started thinking about how to do this. And uh, it is easy. We can do that. But fine. Okay. We, for one month, we got to know that, okay, something which is not existing is not easy. And then we started figuring out, okay, what kind of technologies we can actually bunch in together and come up with a solution. And we come, came up with a nice solution. And that year, which was our first attempt, we were one of the top 47 teams out of 1,200 teams participated that year in the first round. In, so we got a result that, okay, we are in top 47. And then we thought, okay, now, the world is with us, everything is with us. We can actually clear everything and go and meet Elon Musk. After that, uh, when we were in the top 47, and then we actually moved to the final round, final design round, and then that was a, ch that was a bigger challenge. People expected us you know, to design and test more and more, but we were not able to do so because we are a very new team. We were still, you know, in like we were still a baby in terms of all other teams like other technical teams are all around the world and so there were some issues where we could then do much of the testing last year and uh, we couldn't qualify so that was the time when we thought okay it's not the end but it's beginning to something and then we started again preparing for the next year so this is how we started preparing. We started meeting more frequently, looking out for other possibilities and avenues where we could focus on. And then all of these meetings at all different places started testing out various components. And then when we started submitting designs for the next year. So for that round, I mean, we still look back at the time when, so in Indian Standard Time, the submission was 10.30 a.m. in the morning. 
and the time we submitted was 10, 29, 23. So that was how close we were to submitting. And of course, we then got through and a lot of learnings that came along. But then those times, again, those submissions were pretty much parallel to our uh, cultural fest and tech fest, Sarang and Shastra. So our team members, they had to uh, spend little time on their fest and focus more here because we had an important submission coming up. That's the kind of challenge that our team faced managing all of this apart from their uh, prime goal, the academic curriculum that they were here for. So this is how our team grew together and started learning a lot of things and then moved on. Yeah. So actually Indian standard time is was Until 12 hours late, but we were on yeah. time. Pacifics. <laughs> Indian standard time is like 2 hours late. All right, so we uh, then, uh, you know, after a while when we did all the hard work for a whole year, like 2019, 2018 was a full year of all hardships and networking and making people believe that, okay, an Indian team can achieve this kind of objectives. It is possible. And then when we did all these things, we developed a technology stack of our own. Like this can be one of those technology stacks which actually can tell people that uh, Hyperloop can be built in India and this is how we, you know, bind everything together into one single pod. Next. This was our design that we finally developed for the 2018 competition. 2019 competition, my bad. So yes, so this design is what we developed after looking at various combinations, uh, sitting with our professors, discussing their feasibility. And it does look a little fancy, but believe me, the one that we actually developed is quite close to this. We will have a photo ahead. So it's pretty close. Our expectation and reality were almost matched. And here we are, the triumph. The only one from Asia and top 21 finalists in the SpaceX Hyperloop Board competition. Next. Next. So now we got selected into the top 21. We had to develop a pod and we had three months to reach LA with our pod. Now the question is, how do we do that? So first pick, I mean the first question that struck our mind was sponsorship. So we had a budget of over one crore rupees and we had a time span of three months. So that three months we had to do the fundraising, the procurement of components and then our manufacturing assembly, everything just in three months. So first few weeks, all of us were just sitting together and thinking what to do. And then one fine day, we started discussing uh, much deeper, started engaging with our professors and other industrialists, where then we started uh, garnering some help from people. So a process in which we also met uh, Mr. M.M. Murgapan, chairman of the Murgapa group. So one thing that he told us uh, struck our mind, quote unquote, he said, I support you guys, or I, I will continue to support you guys for the fact that you guys are working something for India. So that gave us that confidence and inspiration that yes, what we are doing is not a small thing, it's not just a student project, but it is an indeed big thing that people are looking out for. So that put in a lot of motivation in team members, they started putting much more hard work, and then yes, we did manage to gain sponsors and got funds of over a crore of rupees. And then moving on to the procurement phase, the picture clearly portrays of how we went through the phase because it is extremely half as our outside where we pick up components from here and there. And then when it is all placed, it looks very organized and clean. But believe me, procurement is not something that you can just ignore. So there were components where we spent more on the transit and customs than the components cost itself and their own lead time. So we had more than 50% of international procurements. So their customs, their lead time, their uh, certifications, there are a lot of things that come into the picture. So this, is, this was a very underrated thing that we thought. And then we got to know a lot of things. So there are a lot of stories that I can keep going on telling on how procurement phase was a very challenging one. And once we were done with it, of course, so this is one of our team members, where there are a few components that come up and then he's like, finally, yes, we have it. And now let's run our pod. And then we had to only two hours window, we fix it, we removed it and ran the pod. And the next day was pod and wheel event that we had to do. Because all of our sponsors and all of our supporters were very, you know, uh, very uh, stubborn about like, where is your pod? What are you doing? We don't know. So we had this event on 14th of June. This was one of the finest uh, things in my life that has been done. When I saw my pod running and all of our team members saw that running, it was impeccable. 
So it was happened on 14th June and a lot of other dignitaries, uh, Dr. Ashok Janjanwala also came and he is also an advisor to us and we are very thankful to him. So uh, after this event, we also gathered a lot of media coverage. So on that one day, we were published in more than 45 newspapers and other media houses which covered our event. So that was one proud achievement where, in fact, for my instance, a personal note where a few of my random friends who I wasn't in touch with, they started messaging me, hey, dude, you're being featured here. What are you doing in life? And then I'm like, okay, I'm a part of this team and all of that stuff. So that's how all of us started creating an image of ourselves, which we are all extremely proud of. And then, so this is just an overview of how we uh, featured ourselves in a lot of other papers, be it the Economic Times, Business, and a lot of uh, national uh, media houses. And yes. And this is where we wanted to go, Elon Musk. So here is, he's the. <laughs> so, so, you know, he's very humble, and like I will tell uh, someone if you want to. But it, it was a great experience meeting him, talking to him, and spending a few minutes with him. And uh, so uh, it's not only that we were doing this for Elon Musk, but it was for, you know, doing this for our own learning, our own innovation and something which we can actually build in our own country. So this all taught us, you know, to this all taught us and this all gave us confidence to make, you know, other people believe that if you are in India, you don't have to, you know, think that we can't do anything. You can do everything and everyone is here to support you. With that note, we sign off on behalf of Avishkar Hypeloop, the face of Elon Musk, quite literally. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.